you must learn to push people for claiming as nationalist on the back foot if whatever i have studied from dr ambedkar's literature and his movement he forced people on the back foot everybody is speaking of now as nationalist and how others are not nationalist has anybody thought of an issue have has to how to counter this you have a good example you don't need to search anywhere you have to only scratch your brains and you have to scratch the history and you will have a very powerful weapon with you can anybody think of it rss didn't in all in freedom movement rss didn't in all in any freedom movement that everybody knows it something new something which has not been tried you have been learning also तो तो दो आई वुड नॉट से दैट वाज इन दैट इज एन इशू नाउ ये इट्स अ वेरी पावरफुल इशू यू हैव द एक्ट ऑफ 1880 what's his title that no i'm saying an act of 1980 what's his title that say it loud no that's what you that's what your school has taught you it's a criminal tribe act what were the uh, criminals known earlier the british used the word criminal but what is the actual word they have known as this is the present word this is the present word they were known as pindaris and pindaris is a nation by itself they were one of the most important factors in the 1857 mutiny rest surrendered they didn't surrender and they didn't surrender therefore the british prepared the criminal tribe of act criminal tribe act criminal tribe act and we speak of the concentration camps but these pindaris basically in every state they were separate camps for them but the law says that Six in the evening till six in the morning, he will be in the camp. Daytime he is allowed to earn his bread and butter, but in the evening he has to come back. If he doesn't come back, then there are various punishments that have been prescribed. Between those who surrendered and those who did not surrender. those who surrendered and those who not surrendered did not surrender you have a very powerful weapon today you only need to articulate it
those who surrendered became the slaves of the Britishers. Those who did not become, those who did not surrender, were put in the camps. They got their freedom um, on the first of April, 1952. The camp existed even after 1950. So those who were within the camp, their social, economic, political freedom is two years later. What I'm going, what I'm pointing out is. You must learn to push people who are claiming as nationalist on the back foot. If whatever I have studied from Dr. Ambedkar's literature and his movement, he forced people on the back foot. So he was always on the forefront. And since he always remained on the forefront, he dictated terms. To the society and to the nation. Today we are an intellectual class. We are a learned class. Instead of first saying I want this, let's put those who are claiming nationalist on a back foot. There was a very interesting piece of an Indian describing himself in the Japanese society. And the Indians is now addressing the rest of the Indians. He said, in the Japanese society, I am never invited. And then one day he inquired as to why I am not been invited. And the simple question that was put to him, the how many Britishers ruled you? Being a learner, he said 10,000 and said, what was your population? And the ratio was mentioned. If you don't have the guts, why should we invite you? The Japanese invites only those who have guts. It's a moral lesson I, which I understand that conversation has it. Let's show the guts that we as a history never surrendered. So those who surrendered should not teach us we are going to dictate what we are. The moment you put who are claiming to be nationalists and trying to dictate their terms, you start rewriting the whole thing. So in every generation, I feel, new idioms have to be developed. Which idioms will keep you always on the forefront? And as long as you remain on the forefront, you might be able to communicate, convey, and also execute what you want, whether it will be implemented it depends again where you stand. So I think lot many changes are taking places and we are only feeling the threat of those changes. We are only trying to address this threat perception. But we are not re ready to 
take this threat perception in a context where the others will also feel threatened. But then it starts, begins at when, when there was a group who was ready to survive. Even fight it out. Why did you surrender? I don't think so. There will be an issue, but there will be issue within the Ambedkar rights, I know. Then they will start talking about, oh, had the British has not come, then they would not have any changes. There are many things which will start, but I think so. We should not worry about these kinds of discussion because I normally don't worry about these kinds of discussion. For a simple reason is, I know I can tackle him. He is not my target at the present stage. My target at the present stage is put on defense who is trying to come forward. The leadership and the ideological discussion and the debate and the agenda that the Ambedkar sits in this country should remain as it is and that should be the target and that as I have said can develop only when we think of, of keeping ourselves ahead of the others and that I have said that in an era where issues get changed Today, nationalist has become a major issue. So, you have to speak the theory of surrender and non-surrender. We represent the non-surrenders. So, those who surrender should not teach us. Therefore, I said that every generation is a new generation. There will be new issues. There will be counter to each issues also. To keep abreast to these issues, I think so. We have to develop our own idioms which are historically sound and which cannot be questioned. If we can do that, I think so. We are on the forefront and the third perception then diminishes as I feel it. I have opened up a topic before you for a discussion. I think well, you, everybody can sit and discuss on it. Thank you for inviting me.